Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alexander Jarman, and I'm the manager for public programming here at the San Diego Museum of Art. I want to welcome you. I want to thank you so much for coming out this afternoon. Um, just a few very brief announcements. Um, we want you to go ahead and, and, if you have to, ignore me for the next two minutes, if that means that you are finding your cell phone in the bottom of your purse or your back pocket or whatever and turning that off, silent, something uh, comparable to that. Um, we're going to be here uh, for at least an hour and a half today. Uh, the actual demo is going to be around an hour, uh, but there's going to be some Q&A afterwards. Um, and it's going to be interactive. Uh, we're going to pass around some things as well. Um, I'm always reminded of John Bal one of John Baldessari's most famous quotes, which is, the best way to know about an artist is to hear from the artist. So it's always exciting to have a living artist with us at the museum, um, and not just uh, here to give a lecture, but here to actually show you how the art is made. Um, we do have some wonderful examples and didactics in the exhibition, but surely nothing is as good as seeing it um, live. Um, I'm going to uh, just briefly introduce our wonderful uh, deputy director for curatorial, um, Dr. Julia Marjari Alexander. Um, and she's going to introduce the rest of the program. If you have any questions, remember there is a Q&A session at the end, so uh, hold those uh, until the end, and we'll try and get to all of you. But for right now, please put your hands together and welcome Julia. Thank you. It's really not I who you are welcoming right now, but actually Sonia Quintanilla in my person. So Sonia could not be here today, but she has very kindly provided me with quite a long, if not an hour, um, but quite a long introduction to help put what you'll be seeing in context. So please bear with me and I will um, get through it as quickly as possible, but I think actually you'll find it very, very helpful. So um, thank you. So the San Diego Museum of Art is very proud to present Dying Elegance, Asian Modernism, and the Art of Kuboku and Hisaku Takaku, especially this demonstration today. It is truly a once-in-a-life opportunity. These dyed silk works showcase two artists, one of whom we have here today, who forged a form of expression at once rooted in craft traditions and inherently Japanese, yet one that is thoroughly modern and cosmopolitan, one that reflects the volatile waves of change that passed through Japan in the 20th century. Dying elegance affords us a view of how form and function, tradition and innovation, and the local and international all came together to shape the development of these exquisite and wearable works of art. When this work is seen together in the exhibition, it represents a stunning and singular vision of Asian modernists. Today's demonstration will provide us with a wealth of insight into the dedicated and painstaking craftsmanship behind the creation of every single obi and give us insight into also the making of the kimono, but mainly today we're focusing on the obi. I would like especially to thank, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and Roxana Velasquez, the Executive Director, and as I said earlier, Sonia Quintanilla, um, to, I would like to thank the Asian Arts Council, whose general meeting this is for this month, and it is their generosity that has made actually this exhibition and particularly the publication possible. I'd like to thank the staff of the Department of Education and Programs, Maurice Kawashima, who's lurking in the way back, for putting us in touch with Chako, or Hisako Takaku at the beginning, um, to make us think about this opportunity that we have in showing her work here. I'd like to thank Miyako Aoki, who's back here, um, who has been instrumental in helping Chako bring her work to the center, and not to the center, but to the museum. So all of these people have made this event happen today, but Patrick Coleman, who is standing in the back, he really is the one who has been working with Sonia day in and day out to help make it all come together. So I think we owe him a special thanks, the unsung hero. So now I'll just go through quickly what we're going to see, first putting it in a larger context, 
and then telling you exactly what you will be seeing. So putting this work of, of Hisako Takaku's obi in a larger context, we must go back to the early years of the 20th century. Especially in the 1920s, artists in Japan sought to preserve the handcraftsmanship and Asian philosophical and spiritual traditions as against the encroachment of the industrialization and westernization that was happening once Japan opened up in the 1850s. Hisako Takaku's father, Kuboku, was educated precisely in this milieu. His mentor, Matsuru, Matsugoro, I'm sorry, my Japanese is not very good, um, Hirokawa, was something of a William Morris, I can say that one, um, of the English arts and crafts movement, to various Pan-Asian movements gathering traction in Japan at that time. Through Matsugoro, Kuboku learned a more traditional form of roketsuzome, which is performed using a tool called a chanchin. And you can see a, a picture of this in the exhibition. This is sort of like a fountain pen filled with hot wax. The style of Kuboku's earliest work feature the characteristic de definite lines, tribal themes, and dense patterning of the style called roku, roketsuzome. While Kuboku would remain committed to many traditional elements of his craft as he inherited it from his mentor, he also found himself increasingly drawn to experiments of the European modernists of his day, Picasso, Matisse, Gris, Braque, and these works began to appear in Japan via newly available mass-produced art journals, one of which, which belonged to him, is actually also in the exhibition. During World War II, he experimented with more Cubist styles and abandoned using the chanjin in favor of a Japanese brush. This gave his productions a softer edged, more naturalistic, and inherently Japanese feel. The first gallery of Dying Elegance tells the story of Kuboku's developing style during this period, one in which you can see the artist struggle to find a path through the contrary impulses of tradition and modernity. So while he's creating these, these works in a kind of Western style exhibition, he also began to produce kimono and obi. And these were sold at high-end kimono shops in Tokyo and also via catalog for, by a wholesaler. The functionality of these formats suited his ideas of art making. They were meant to be used, not only appreciated from afar. On the kimono and obi, he gravitated towards natural features, flowers, mountains, and rivers, with compositions rooted in a personal philosophy of balance and flow, which drew from Taoist antecedents. His use of the Japanese brush enabled him to dye designs into the silk in sumie styles, which is no easy feat, as you'll see. These images resonated with the educated Japanese women who were looking to rally around national art forms. And these designs proved to be exceptionally popular. In 1962, he retired from life as a public artist and devoted all of his energy to designing kimono and obi. Hisako Takaku grew up observing her father's unique praxis and devotion to his work. Despite his warnings and constant warnings of a difficult road, Hisako followed him into her career in art. She first studied oil painting and then designed printed cotton fabrics, which were manufactured for sale in Japanese department stores. Her father encouraged the latter path as a place to practice designing the obi. During this time, she assisted Kuboku in his studio and began to pr producing her own works using the roketsuzome. In 1977, she devoted herself to creating kimono and obi full time and worked side by side with her father as an artist of equal talent, skill, and vision. Only one year later, she and Kuboku would have their first of many joint exhibitions celebrating their work. During this period, she remarked that she achieved a deeper understanding of her father's aesthetic philosophy, one that, that emphasized the balance of opposing elements while maintaining a graceful flow between them all. She also integrated what she had learned from oil painting and her own pantheon of modern European influences, which favored French modernists, such as Bernard Catelin and André Brasilier. In order to arrive at her own signature style, she fused all of these influences together. 
An elegant and complex portrait of Hisako's personal style is available to us in her suite of kimono and obi of the Four Seasons, which have been shown in this exhibition for the first time outside of Japan, and they are in the second gallery. In these wearable works of art, warring influence have found an organic and unified expression. Their format is indigenous and functional. It's not rarefied art to be admired from a distance. The designs integrate geometric forms and color experiments of European modernism, but merge these with a sensibility steeped in Japanese sumie ink brush painting and the Rimpa school artists develop deep sense of sensibility to nature. By being both works of art and functional products influenced by modernity, yet rooted in tradition, Kuboku and Hisako's kimono and obi are where their unique solution to the questions facing modern Japanese artists find their most successful and unified expression. If you've been in the exhibition, and I think most of you have, you know how delicate and spontaneous these designs appear. If they are the result of a well-practiced -practi hand moving quickly with a heavy dyed brush, you can hardly tell. The precise and labor-intensive nature of the process behind each of these objects may come to you as something a surprise. We are about to see how we can illuminate this kind of effort and attention that goes into making a single obi. And this process is days and weeks of work telescoped into an hour. So to help put all of that into context, I'll describe briefly the steps in the process. And you'll see, even talking about their brand of rok roketsuzome is not very quick. So, and or I order a commission, I commission an obi from Chaco, and I select a design from a pattern book. She then uses the pattern and any pre-existing test designs that she has made, sketching the design using sumi ink onto a paper which, covering, which covers over a light box. The light box is key because then she can next position the roughly 19 foot long obi silk over it to project the sumi ink sketch up onto the final location of the design. When the finished obi is worn, this design will appear on the knot at the wearer's back, so placement is incredibly precise. She then uses a blue ink made from starch and iodine called ibana to trace the design onto the silk. The obi is hung at full length across her studio, much as it's here, which is an impressive sight in and of itself. It's then ready at this point to receive its first application of wax, ro, which is melted in a cup atop a small lantern. She places the wax around the outline of the design where she does not want the dye to penetrate the material, so it's a kind of reverse process. Only then can it receive the first color. Each variation in tone has to be applied separately, and layering the dye increases its opacity. And one of the hallmarks of a Takaku design is the beautiful and translucent quality of the colors. To create the effects of brush slowly running out of ink as it travels across the fabric actually requires several applications of minutely varying tones of dye. While a Takaku obi can have the appearance of a sumie sketch that would take only minutes for her to create, she, might as, she needs to work for as many as 10 days on a single obi. So this also doesn't include all the ironing and the cleaning processes that are needed to set the dye and re remove all the traces of ibana and wax. So all of this process has in, in itself a level of patience and control that testify to Hikisako's immense artistic dedication to perfection. So with all of this, all of these words in mind, it is with great pleasure and anticipation that we now turn to the demonstration itself. As, as Alexander said, there will be a short period of question and answer at the end of the demonstration, and we will be passing around or showing you a completed, um, a completed obi um, out in the audience afterwards. But I'm sure we will all want to stand to appreciate something new about these amazing, amazing works of art and what goes into the production of each. Please join me in welcoming wholeheartedly Hisako Takaku and her interpreter, Reiko Yamadashima. Yeah. Uh, 
thank you very much for coming for my demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> she is the most uh, famous and valued um, women uh, wax dye artist in Japan. And today, she would like to introduce Roketsu Zome, which is wax resist dyeing. It has been descended as traditional industrial arts for um, hundreds of years. Today, she would like to show you uh, the industrial art technology, plus the technique and idea which her, her father, Kuboku, created. From her father to her generation, and uh, they try very hard to bring up our, uh, their technique to be artistic. Not only everyday clothing of kimono or obi. And um, uh, different from traditional Japanese uh, paintings or Western art paintings, oil paintings, dyeing allows only one chance at perfection. In this uh, intensive process, the um, Artist, artists must have uh, completed the image in mind, precisely calculated each step in the production process, and fully grasp the uh, ethics, ethically appearing points of the piece before launching into actual production. Without a clear vision of the beauty of the final product, the result will be a failure. And Kuboku and charcoal works are char characterized by strong brushwork, distinctive st uh, stylishness, witty expression, and modern rhythm. And, uh, his and uh, their enduring efforts to overcome hardship and their intense desire to succeed helped him, uh, them to achieve their elegant color combinations. So now, she so would like to start showing First, uh, using Japanese brush, she, she sketches the design on paper, uh, like flowers, uh, fish, um, fish, fish, birds, <laughs> whatever yes. they like, you like. Okay. Yes. え、真っ白いあの、シルクの布にあの、好きな書いた図の絵を写します。あ、レイシルクオーバーザスケッチ。ユージュアリオーバーライトあ、ライトボックスアンダーニースイト。But uh, iodine, uh, kuzu vine powder, it's a, it's a Japanese um, um, tree, made from Japanese tree powder and water, traces the outline of the design. Uh, this dye will disappear when it is steam. Uh, usually, uh, she draw the uh, core of the flowers. Well, I would like to say, um, usually it takes a long period of time, but today um, she only has a certain amount of time, so it, it might be difficult for you to understand, so but please understand that. <laughs> so she finished out drawing this um, flower. So this is the one. She finished drawing sketches. Wakarimasu. Hey. Hanano, 
Now she's going to draw the core of the rose. And then she gonna, she's going to dry by hair dryer. After it is dried, Koitokoro, Ichiban Barano Shin no Tokoroni, Pointo de Koi Akao Sashimas. She colors the in the right in the middle of core, she put the darker red. She colors it. Do you see? So next one is the one she finished, dried one with gore, pink and red. Now she, uh, she melts the wax in a small, small cup on top of the lantern usually and draw white flower with wax. This wax is made from a um, plant. It's called mokuro, and which is uh, soft and spread easily. あの、この時にろうの重なりで筆精が出ます。筆精ろう、えっと、筆の、え、うん、なんていうか、書き順が出るという。書き順っていうの。なんか、あの、書いた跡が出る。あと、あ、はい。あ、when uh, she draw with this wax, it shows the um Trace, trace of the um, her brush, brushing the tra brushing the trace. So when the some of the wax is kind of um, doubled, oh, some places uh, one one brush and some other places uh, have double brushing. In that way, it gives you the um, uh, so uh, how to say three dimension. 
type thing. Not just flat, but it's three dimensional. Ready? Finish. And finished for white, white flower. The next. Yellow, grand, Grand and yellow. Then uh, she applies yellow ground color of yellow using hake brush. That's a big, big brush. Can you see it? So, Stara, Low, no, Shiroi Hana, no, where me, Kabuta, Kiro, no, Bochi, Bochi, O, Kitorimas. You wipe off the uh, yellow, yellow color on top of white flower. So you brush off all the small dust and everything. So white flower is finished. So when this ground color is dried, this is the one. And it has to be let it dry naturally. Otherwise, it's it the color will get uneven. Just Next step is to draw uh, leaves and stems. そしたら、どうしましょう。え、ちょっとこちら、セッティングしましょうか。え、このこの葉っぱと茎のところに色を入れるためにパラフィンのローで、え、染料が二次まないようにするためにここローで止めていきます。はい。Uh when um when the ground color is uh, dried, using liquid paraffin, brushes the wax around the outside of the outlines drawn in Ibana, like um, outside of leaves and stems. Okay. So the color won't blur.
クローであの止めますと染料がにじみませんから茎と葉っぱができます。So, if when you draw by wax, perfume wax outside of the leaves and stems,、uh, when she draws,、uh, she colors the stem and leaves, it, it won't flare. So, this is the hair dryer. Hello. えー、と乾かし乾かしては塗り、yeah. 乾かしては塗りを繰り返します。She c o l o r s and let it dry and draw again and many times over and over. ちょっと宮古さんこれこう持って乾かしててください。So the paraffin wax is now melted. So, this paraffin、uh, wax dries very quickly and doesn't spread easily, so she has to be passed through the gel very quickly. So, this is how it, it is. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm g o i At other places, she, she's gonna、uh, die again. To give the dimensional look, three dimensional look. でまた乾かします。And then dry it again. えー、こう、えー、薄く残してあります。あ、uh,、she left the、uh, stem part really light, light. あ、薄薄くの残すことによって立体感が出てきます。Uh, to give the three dimensional look.
the reason she uses this paraffin wax for stop to go go the uh, color out. This this uh, wax uh, is easy to wash up. Oh, and it, it doesn't have the color, but this white co uh, white wax it shows kind of yellowish uh, color after it take taken away. オッケー、大体やりましょうか。大体でいいから。そして、大丈夫。え、なんてね。透かして、はい。え、こうやって。ローがついてるので、あの、透かして、自分が濃くしたいところをまた塗っていきます。あ、で。Paraffin wax is on, so you kind of go through and see how, if you want to other places, it's going to be darker, so uh, you color more. あの、乾かしては塗り、乾かしては塗りするのえ、7回から8回。図によっては10回以上繰り返します。7 だんだんあのこのお花があのバラのお花が生き生きしてきます。Then you can see the um, roses it's very brightly. この、え、最初が完成したのがこちらです。So the last one is the finished one. で、え、白いお花にグレーの色をかぶせます。So you should put a gray color on top of white flower. これによってバラの花びらの表現ができます。So the petal of the flower will be a, a kind of a very alive looking. そうするとローの薄いところにあのグレーが染みていきます。So the uh, wax when the wax is very light places uh, this gray color will go in. そしてこれが終わったのがこちらです。あの、出来上がりの図を見ていただくと。あ、would you like 今最後のと同じのがこれですね。So this is the same one as the at the end, the finished one. アイロンついてますか? ついてます。はい。え、アイロンで 60%くらいのローを取っておきます。And then she takes away maybe 60% of the wax by ironing.
and the cloth is placed between tissue and newspaper and iron it. And the chokseto so she has to put tissues first, otherwise the newspaper ink yeah. will <laughs> come beyond. ぬるいですね。いや、いやいや、気合入ってるんですけど。全然ぬる。強くなってんですよね。一番強い。はい、みんな。バリキがね。あ、アイロンで焦がさないようにしてロを取っていきます。Not to burn the wax by ironing. So this is how it's gonna be. こうなります。これを蒸して、これを蒸して、それからこのロウをすっかり取って水洗いして完成です。and then uh, steam it to set the dye for about one hour. And then further cleaned with warmed um, trichloroethylene, that solvent, that removes every um, wax. And then washed in again in uh, water and let it dry. And at the end, iron again. That's the finish. So please, uh, please see the finished one, and she's going to pass it pass around. Yeah. Do we have any questions? Oh, right in the front. So all the fabric that you use, you actually dye. It starts out as a white silk, and she brushes the color on all the fabrics for the kimonos and the obis. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Do we have one more? Did you have somebody at the other? The little hemispheres that are under the uh, fabric, are, are they, uh, are they, is there tension in that to hold the fabric uh, out straight or, and how are they attached? Those little half circles that are below the fabric. Like the ribs. Oh, this, uh, you mean the, how yeah. this is? Uh, underneath, the underneath, this, it, uh, no, this no, beyond, the, the half circles. Oh, this one? Yeah, are they, are they, they, are oh, they just... this is a... <laughs> it, it's called shinshi. Okay, so they, they actually uh, hold it really stretched. Uh, bam, bamboo, bamboo narrow stick. And it has a little uh, a new needle. Okay. Both sides. So, so that it holds it. Yeah. So... Right. 
this, this will, uh, this one shrink. When she draw, it, it tie, uh, tends to shrink this material. So to prevent that, she used that. Yes. We have one more question in the back. Ah, depend on the materials she uses. Uh, this this uh, should be sometimes it's long and sometimes short. <laughs> Pardon me. Which one? Pardon me? What? Does she work on the same kind of setup in your studio, stretched out like this? Ah, uh, um, uh, Exactly the same. だから着物の時は、え、3つに分けて長い着物を3つに貼る、縫って、だから、じゃ、長くなる。長いです。幅が いやいやいやいや。三つにあれを着物の形を全部ほどして、それで三つに分けて染めます。For like kimono, it's gonna be take long, about about maybe you know long, long has to be. What I I can't hear. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Do you have any kind of an indentation along the fabric? Yes, you do. Okay. But it goes away once you take the bamboo away. Oh, a little, 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 so. Right, it, or either obi or a kimono. Okay. Well, yes, uh, my question is this. When you make the obi, uh, the obi is 18 feet long. When you display it, you fold half of it. And when you wear it, most part is hidden. So I'd like to know why do you need to dye the whole thing? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> Uh, what is this? Second question. What's saying that? I'm here. I'm here. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, I'd like to know why do you need to dye the whole thing since uh, you hide the most part of the fabric is hidden. When you display or when you wear it, you fold it many, many times, only a small portion will be uh, shown. shown. Right, right. So why, why do you need to take care of the whole length of fabric? あ、キムオビの時にね、本当に見えるのは本当少しの場所ですよね。だからなんでこんなに全部やるんですか。全部やらないんですか。いやいや、これはあのパターンごとにあの、こういう形状のようにあの、これが乾くまで待ってたら大
I thought that it's going to take so many days. No, more than one week. I thought.あ、あの、最初のね、白い芯のところはあの、ワックスを使わなかったんですけども、それはなんで使わないんですか。えっと、この白い花の中に入ってる、あの、バラの芯っていうのは柔らかくて、そんな目立たないものだから、あの、柔
uh, not the real sewing, but the, you know. <laughs> and then she draw. Uh, she the kimono, she right. Yes. Right. I have a question of dye. How many you dye so many times, or just uh, dye is one time or two times, three times? Which dye? Dye. She's using. Oh, you mean dye. the back, back, uh, background color? Dye. Uh, where was the dye? Um, Aoi dye. Ro, ro kotsudome aio dye. Uh, iodine. Uh, that's iodine. I, iodine. 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 Do you use iodine? Well, this is a safer question. Do you use iodine? Yes, yes. Uh, when first she draw the um, sketches. How come you using iodine? Iodine. <laughs> So when after finishing, it, it, uh, you don't want this uh, to be shown. And by steaming, uh -huh. iodine will disappear. Disappear. That's oh, why she uses it. And also, I have a question about dye. Did you say dye? Dye. Dye. D-Y-E. Dye. D-Y-E. Do yes. you use, does she use a dye? Ah, uh, you mean the colors? Color. Yes, she, she uses many colors, like yellow and uh, gray. So pink. those are come from dye, D-Y-E. D-Y-E, yes. Uh, how many times do you say dye? Like how many times do you say, like a dye is a very complicated material. If you use, how many times? I know, Nankai Gura is called this Japanese. Nankai Dai, you know, so no, you don't know, it's called the show. on the work she is making. All right, thank you very much. Where does the silk come from? Is it a commercial fabric or do you have a special weaver? あの、この絹はどこどういうものを使ってらっしゃるんでしょうか。なんか特別なものですか？それとも普通に売ってる？売ってる？これは帯生地専用の生地です。This is especially uh, uh, this silk is specially for obi, made for obi. Uh, I I wonder before um, before you start using electrical irons, how did you remove the wax and how did you heat the uh, the wax to put it on the on the fabric. Uh, before uh, you, uh, you use iron. Yeah. Huh. In 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 years back, whenever whenever she worked with her father, um, how did they apply the wax oh, and how did they oh, remove the wax? Before they have iron. Yeah. Ah, my father and mother, when they were young, they had iron. Iron was there. What was it? They had iron. So. <laughs> <laughs> I understand before iron, however, before hair dryer, what did you use? Hair dryer ga, ano, wa, wa, tan de shou ka, mai. Ano, uchi de wa, onpu ki o tsukatte mas. Ah, demo, mukashi, mukashi no hanashi. Mukashi? Eh, mukashi, hair dryer ga nakatta n janai de shou ka. Iya, arimashita. Arimashita. She said that they had hair dryer also. <laughs> What did she say? She said before the light box. Oh. I think it's just like tracing. You needed to have something that you could, you would have a transparent you know, candle underneath it. Yeah. Well, it was that old uh, age, no. you know? <laughs> <laughs>
Domo arigato. Uh, no. I'm wondering if you ever had an apprentice, and if not, why not? An apprentice? Does she have an apprentice? Does she have a student or an ah, ah. No, she doesn't take any student. Yeah, I'm wondering why she isn't taking apprentice. Why are we? Why is, is it going to be a dying art? Oh, to not to have a student. Ah, no. How will the teacher not be able to take it? Ah, the work will So it bothers her work. <laughs> she doesn't have time. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? For the dye that you use, what is uh, of what is it composed? What is it made of? What? what? Yes. What the colors the dyes made of? Ah, I know. Sendio, what is it made of? It's not a uh, pl plum plant. It's uh, oh, synthetic. Yes, synthetic. So I think we, we all want to, is this on? I'd love to thank Chaco by giving her a beautiful bouquet of flowers and um, thank all of you. Yeah.